we extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, gay, filthy rich, dirt poor, no habla inglés. We extend a special welcome to those who are crying newborns, skinny as a rail, or could afford to lose a few pounds. We welcome you if you can sing like Andrea Bocelli, or like our pastor who can't carry a note in a bucket. You're welcome here if you are just browsing, just woke up, or just got out of jail. We don't care if you're more Catholic than the Pope, or haven't been in church since little Joey's baptism. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60, but not grown up yet, and to teenagers who are growing up too fast. We welcome soccer moms, NASCAR dads, starving artists, tree huggers, latte sippers, vegetarians, junk food eaters. We welcome those who are in recovery or still addicted. We welcome you if you're having problems or you're down in the dumps or if you don't like organized religion. We've been there too. If you blew all your offering money at the dog track, you're welcome here. We offer a special welcome to those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or because grandma's in town and wanted to go to church. We welcome those who are inked, pierced, or both. We offer a special welcome to those who could use a prayer right now, had religion shoved down your throat as a kid, or got lost in traffic and wound up here by mistake. We welcome tourists, seekers and doubters, bleeding hearts, and you. And you. And you. And you. Welcome to Christ Church. Thank you for joining us in Sunday morning worship. We're happy you are here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself, and as, as an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin, God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that they, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the people with equity and guide all the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. 
She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. In 1 Kings 17, there is a story about the prophet Elijah. A famine of both God's word and of rain has fallen upon Israel. And so Elijah is sent to this area of uh, Sidon and Tyre in which he encounters this widow woman. And the widow woman has but just a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. But she trusts in the prophet Elijah, even though she is a Canaanite. And she offers Elijah what it is that she has. In the Old Testament, in times in which the people of Israel's ears were closed to God, it oftentimes seemed that the people of Tyre and Sidon were willing to accept the prophets, welcome them, and hear what God has to say to them. It is in this backdrop that we come to today's gospel story. The last few chapters, Jesus has been busy at work healing and comforting, calling uh, people into right relationship with God, calming storms, feeding the multitudes, And the response from that in Matthew's gospel is that the Pharisees come out to challenge Jesus, not caring so much about the people who were once hungry but are now fed, not caring so much about those who were sick but are now healed, not those who had a broken relationship with God but now have been restored, but they want to know from Jesus, why is it that your disciples do not ritually wash their hands before They eat. We might sit there and and, and kind of have a little bit of compassion with the Pharisees. If you've ever been somebody who has noticed somebody leaving the restroom without washing their hands and you throw a judgmental glance at them, you might feel a little bit and understand how they felt. But Jesus reminds the people who hear That it is not what comes into us that makes us unclean. It is what comes out of us. Jesus says that it is lying and adultery. It is murder. Those are the things that make us unclean. Worrying about whether we have followed the intricacies of law around purity, Jesus says, is sort of missing the point. It's almost as if Matthew is retelling the story of 1 Kings 17. And so the ears were closed about God's work in the world. And so Jesus goes to the area of Tyre and Sidon, goes to the land of Cana. And there he encounters this woman whose daughter has been sick for a long time. She begins to beg Jesus to heal her daughter. And any of us who has had a child who has been sick can understand the predicament that she is in. We probably even have an enormous amount of compassion for her frustration and her fear and her worry. The disciples say to Jesus, Jesus, come on, just give her whatever it is that she wants so that she will go away. And Jesus responds to the disciples and says, remember, my calling is to the 
lost sheep of Israel. It isn't to this Canaanite woman. On this side of the cross, Jesus' ministry was to the people of Israel to proclaim that the kingdom of God has come near and inviting them to live in God's kingdom. We oftentimes sort of forget that Jesus is Jewish and that Jesus is the Messiah for the Jewish people. We have oftentimes in the Christian religion tried to erase Jesus' Jewishness as a way to try to make his universality a little bit easier to believe in. We seem to forget that God called a particular people into being the people of Israel, asking them to be a light to the world, asking them to be a sign and the witness of God's power in the midst of a world which goes counter to God's ways, and offering a hope that the healing of the nations will occur. These hopes are captured most vividly in Isaiah's Messages in which he promises that there will come a day in which there will be no more war and the lion and the lamb will lie down together. We love the idea of the lion and the lamb lying down together. We just aren't so sure that we like the fact that it comes from a particular story and a particular people. Our modern ears hear the chosenness of Israel, and we think that it sounds exclusive. Theologians have used the term the scandal of particularity to describe how salvation is not brought in the abstract, but in the specificity of Jesus of Nazareth. That the kingdom of God is not brought sort of in the nebulous way, but in the specificity of a person who is born and died under the Roman Empire and raised to new life. This message in which we hear Jesus saying, my first calling is to the people of Israel, we pick up a portion of this in our liturgy when we pray the prayer of humble access. We pray in that prayer that we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but you, Lord, You are one that always show grace. Dr. Lauren Winner, a Orthodox Jewish person who turned Episcopalian and a professor at Duke, reflects on the history of violence by Christians towards Jewish people. Often using the often using the desecration or the stealing of a communion host as the excuse and the reason for the violence. And she says that the prayer of humble access, in which we pray we are not worthy so much to gather up to the crumbs of thy table, is a way for us to remember that our story is ultimately a story about Jewish hope and Jewish calling and Jewish chosenness which is made real for the entire world in the death and resurrection of Jesus. That the prayer of humble access is not about our sinfulness. No, she says, that it is a reminder that we have been grafted into a story, a particular story about a particular people, about a particular way in which God is going to save the world, and a hope that is given in Jesus Christ to all. We're invited in this text to remember that oftentimes we too, the people of God, have closed our eyes and our ears and our mouth to God's ways and God can work beyond the limits that we try to place because God's ways are ways of graciousness and of love. That God is not bound by our limits, but God is limitless. Amen. We're going to continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried on the third day. He rose and again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world, especially St. Dunstan's in Tulsa and St. Stephen's Homeless Shelter and HIV Clinic in Montevideo, Uruguay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We, express, we pray especially this day for the birthdays of Titus Brewer, James Snell, Riley Schofelt, Madison Rath, Brooks Devereaux, Truman Taylor, and Becky Hitzman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially this day for Mia, Kathy, Robbie, Bill, Bob, Jack, Archer, Sandy, Tom, David, Gabriel, and for those who have the coronavirus and those who are susceptible for medical professionals, and for those who have lost jobs or income. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you for joining us this morning uh, uh, for our Holy Communion uh, service. Uh, just a couple of really quick announcements. Uh, next Sunday, we will be offering um, online um, or at our outdoor services at 8, 15, and 9. A blessing as students and teachers and administrators return back to school. 
uh, offering and praying for God's uh, protection, guidance, and um, wisdom in the coming year. These are obviously um, strange times for all of us, particularly for those in the education um, setting. The other is, um, after Labor Day, uh, we will be uh, regathering um, story groups. Um, these will be meeting uh, virtually and um, in socially distanced in-person ways. Uh, details of that will be um, available. Um, if you would like to know more information, feel free to email the church office, and we will make sure that we um, put you down as a person that's interested in these small groups where we can explore deeper faith with one another um, and with God. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. joining us online. Uh, my microphone is having some technical difficulties, so it might be a little bit more difficult to hear me um, as we celebrate the Mass. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of life and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. When we've fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night that he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave him thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this, Lord, in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. For the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gift of God for the people of God. Now with the post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. God.